you're doing great and welcome. If you're new here, hi, my name is Francisca. I'm an artist. Ooh. I love printmaking and today I want to show you a technique that I really like. You can use it to make something like this print, which is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm not going to show you how to print it because frankly right now I don't have the spare money to get the materials I would need to print it at home, but this technique is very useful if you are renting a work workshop to make sure you are using that time wisely so you can create this plate at home and then print it at the workshop. I'm not sure if this artist actually created this technique, but the Portuguese artist David de Almeida at least further developed it and even wrote a book about it. You can try to find it, I will leave the info about the book in the description, but it is written in Portuguese, it was a very small run a few years ago, so it's actually a very rare book. I was fortunate enough to actually learn this technique from his daughter, because this is such a nice technique that I really hope you try it too. One of the nice things about this technique is that it is way less toxic than most other calcography techniques, because you are basically going to be using household items to create this plate. So, for, For this recipe, recipe you will need oh. big spatula, tiny spatula, a spoon, some kind of tile or glass, wall repair paste, rubbing alcohol, shellac flakes, wood glue, MDF board or plywood, sandpaper, and there are a few other materials that I forgot to show in the video, but you are also going to need, you know, some water, a scratching tool, like a scrap of wood, so you can use it later with the sandpaper. But yeah, you also need a plate to mix the glue with the water later on, and a plate to mix the shellac with the rubbing alcohol. So the first thing you have to do is sand the board, and specifically uh, sand the edges onto a slope to make sure that the edges of the board does, do not damage the press when you print it. If you don't want to print it, it doesn't really matter, but it's nice to do. And also, if you are using MDF, the surface, the shiny surface, sometimes doesn't take the, um, the stone paste very well, the, the wall repair paste very well. That's another thing you need to consider. Um, after sanding, you should then mix a bit of the paste with the glue and this is where you need the tile because the tile or the glass is very easy to clean. You want to grab like a spoonful or two, however much you think you need to have a two to three millimeters thick um, layer on top of the board to a bunch of glue. You can kind of see the ratio on the, on the screen right now. You don't need too much glue. Wood glue is usually PVA based, so it is a bit flexible when it's dry, which helps to prevent cracks as the paste dries. If you are using powder, either stone powder or wall repair powder, instead of the premixed stuff, you want to use half glue, half water until you reach the correct consistency. After you mix the paste with the glue, you will need the big spatula to spread the paste onto the board on an even layer. This is the step where you can add texture if you want while the paste is wet. So you can either do a smooth layer and later on scratch it to get lines and stuff, or you can do right now, use some other scratching tool or a different kind of spatula or the same spatula, you can do whatever you want, or even your fingers. This is the part where you can add texture. This is the highlight of this technique. So this is where you want to use leaves to create uh, leaf shapes. This is where you want to use flowers, use, um, I don't know, random objects, your ring, something that you can stamp onto the plate, because all of that will get printed when you print the plate or use the plate to print so this is where you can let your imagination run wild it's really fun your hands will get absolutely filthy but it's gonna be very fun <laughs> once you're happy with your design you need to let the paste dry completely and while you do that please go wash your tools you don't want crusty tools and don't forget to make sure you dilute the paste as much as you can 
just to be sure you don't clog your pipes. That is a nightmare. Please be careful with that. <laughs> cracks like this. If you don't mind it, then go ahead, but you will get cracks like this through your piece. When your paste is dry, check to see if you have any bumps that are too high and too thin, because um, if it is too... if you have bumps that are too big, they will be crushed by the press and it will destroy both the print and the plate. So what you want to do right now is Grab the sandpaper again, go outside again. Please don't breathe in this powder, just... <laughs> just go outside to do that. Uh, you want to sand all around again to keep that slope. And then you want to fold, like, fold the sandpaper around a piece of wood to sand the tops of those very thin and tall parts. Just to make sure you don't have those things that will get crushed in the press. Um, once you do that, you are not, don't worry, you're not going to destroy everything, just don't go ham on it. Just go very softly, just to take off the excess. Um, you can fill it with your hands, if it is, like, spiky, you, that will get crushed. I thought I was ready to just apply the glue, which would be technically the next step, but I noticed I wanted to define a few lines a bit more, so I just scratched the places where I wanted to define the shapes a bit more uh, and make deeper cuts into the, um, into the paste. Since it's already dry, it will crumble, so it's not going to be super defined. It will depend on the paste you use, you just have to try them. And then when you think you're done, you brush it with a soft bristle brush just to take off the powder that is going around, <laughs> just to make sure it doesn't get stuck on the glue. Then you mix the glue with a bit of water, which I've done before, instead of doing it now. I started with mixing the, <laughs> the water with some glue. It's like a third of water to two thirds glue. Some people use less glue than that, but I think that's a nice safe way of doing it. Um, then you coat everything in the glue, both the front and the back. I think it's nice to coat too. Not everyone coats the back with glue, but I prefer to do it, especially on MDF board. With plywood, you have a little bit more of a leeway, I guess. Make sure every spot is covered. If it's not, you can always do another thin coat. The last step is to coat it in lacquer. So you want to dilute the lacquer flakes in alcohol, like rubbing alcohol. This is the part where this project is no longer vegan. Uh, so sorry if you are vegan, you can try and find another way to coat the wood in the, in the end. But lacquer is made from the... I'm not sure if it is a secretion or if it is the shell of a very specific bug. I, I think I will find a link to put in the description about lacquer, but basically uh, it's made from bugs and then you dilute it in alcohol and it coats wood amazingly, like it's resistant to water, it's resistant to the solvents you use with etching ink, which is mind-blowing. How is a bug resistant to that, but not to alcohol? So yeah. It is, uh, it leaves a great finish on wood. Wood gets very shiny, waterproof, it's really nice. You want to let it dry completely and even though shellac dries decently fast, I prefer to let it dry at least overnight because I'm always scared that the plate might stick to the paper. But when it's dry, you can finally print it. And by far my favorite way of printing this is blind printing. This basically means you print without any ink and the paper takes the shape and texture of the plate. This technique highlights the paper as an integral part of the print, so it is perfect to explain to people why the paper you choose matters. You can also print this like regular calcography, similar to the way you would print zinc plate or copper plate etching. You have a lot of options when it comes to printing, and I could talk about them all day, but I'll save it for another time. If you'd like to purchase this print, it will be available at my online store, at least by the time this video comes out because I only have two left, so you better rush if you really want one of those. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you do try this technique. You can always like frame the plate 
if you don't have the means to print it, so the plate, is, the plate itself is also a very cool object, so I would consider that a win. If you are new here, please consider subscribing and just so you don't miss the rest of my videos, I will try to post every Saturday. Let's see how that goes, but I hope it goes well, I think. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you very much and bye, I guess. <laughs>